Kara and Shayna from Sweet and Savvy Life here to share with you a 100% crowd-pleasing recipe for anything from friends over for the game to a holiday gathering and beyond. Cavatini is what's for dinner. Please join us as we show you how to make this delicious, amazing dish. Be sure to watch till the end to make this dish a freezer-ready meal. We decided to make cavatini for an upcoming gathering, an Easter egg dyeing extravaganza with friends we hadn't seen since pre-COVID. And I actually was in the house by myself for the first time ever because my son was on his trial run for daycare at Nana and Pop Ups. So I actually was able to film this without any interruption, which was just pretty novel these days but I wanted Shayna to share with you a little bit about why she came to know Cavatini why we make it all the time in college my one friend invited me over and this dish is what her mom served to us I enjoyed the pasta um, as it's one of my favorite foods but they also had pepperoni in it and cheese and then after we finished the meal they actually explained to me that they used their deer meat to make the meal. Obviously in our meal we either use ground turkey or ground beef. So this dish has evolved with me for many years now and we've added our own touches to it, more seasoning, more flavor, some green pepper. Yeah so like getting back to that deer meat, um, was that the one and only time you've ever had deer meat or have you had more experiences with that because I don't think I've ever had deer meat. <laughs> I, this, that was the first time I had cooked deer meat, but I have had uh, deer jerky. And, and you can see right here, we're mixing ground turkey and grass-fed ground beef. Uh, the ground beef came from Sam's Club. It's $4.99 a pound. I think that's as good as it gets as far as a price um, because it's also organic. And then the ground turkey came from, I believe it was BJ's. So... It's kind of nice to mix up two meats, but I don't know about deer meat. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess if we were hunters, but my family doesn't hunt, yeah. and I don't think yours did either, right? No. And you can't buy it. No. No. So, in our area, though, many people are deer hunters, um, and in fact, I work for a school, and we always have off the Monday after Thanksgiving because it's the opening day for deer hunting season. Yeah. I always assume that that's the way it was everywhere that you had off. Thanksgiving and then Black Friday and Monday, <laughs> but apparently other places in the U.S. do not have off hunting Monday. So if you've been following our recipes so far, you know I'm obsessed with these <laughs> skillets from Pampered Chef. It's the non-stick stainless steel skillets. We have two sizes of them plus a wok, so three different pans in this exact Hexclad like type of dish. We kind of think Hexclad makes them. We really don't know. So we can't speak for Pampered Chef, but they're just amazing. I mean, what what do you have to say about the, these, these? I'm the one that wanted them from the beginning. And then when I found out how <laughs> easy they were to clean afterwards, since I usually do the dishes, I was very happy to buy more. Yeah. We got a lot of discounts too because I was doing a Pampered Chef online party over COVID. And then they were doing promos anyway. And because we got a lot of people that bought, we got like a certain extra percentage off. I think it was one of those promos where the more people bought, the more everybody got a percentage off. But I could be wrong. Or maybe it was just amount of product mm -hmm. we got. Either way, it was a great deal. And you can see here we are in the process of making this dish. We have to use the trio noodles. Why would that be? Why is that? Why is that key? I cavatini? did ask my friend from college why, and she said it's just more fun. Three oh. different kinds of noodles. It looks good. Uh, kind of three. They cook um, differently, you know, the rotini and the shells. So yeah, it's just fun. And if you're wondering why this sauce that we're using is frozen, <laughs> it's because it's my homemade marinara sauce from the summer we have great luck with tomatoes 
to the side of our screen and porch. I'm sure in a future video we'll, we'll share that with you. But we do so well that we have so many tomatoes left over. We have to use them, otherwise they're gonna go bad. So we found a great Instant Pot recipe which uses some red wine and all your tomatoes. Doesn't matter what kind of tomatoes it are, they are, you can use whatever it is. It's like five pounds yeah. of tomatoes. Grape tomatoes, big tomatoes, yeah. any kind that you're growing. And you can see this meal just really comes together so easily. You boil pasta, you cook the meat with pepper and onion, you mix it with some sauce, some cheese, and pepperoni. <laughs> and speaking of pepperoni, did you know that cavatini was on the menu in the 70s and 80s at the salad bar of Pizza Hut? I wouldn't know because I wasn't even born yet. Well, I was born towards the end of the 80s, but I don't think I ever went to um, Pizza Hut when this dish was still on their menu. And I believe they made theirs with mushroom, so I assume mushroom would be a great addition. We also kind of thought Italian sausage might be, be good. We were actually not sure if I was going to use that, only because we had it defrosted, whereas our... Uh, meats we chose to use were still in the freezer at the time, but in the end we decided to go with turkey and beef. Mm -hmm. You can see me adding seasoning here. In, in the original recipe that Shana got from her friend, they call for a lot less seasoning, like half teas. Um, this is a double batch, I will say that. So the recipe we showed earlier was a single batch. We made it as a double batch. Shana kind of referenced it earlier. Do you want to talk about why we made it a double batch this time? We made it a double batch because we just wanted leftovers. And if we we're gonna make this meal, we wanted to have more of it. We wanted to save a portion to have for when my wife goes back to work because she's on maternity leave now. And we thought it would be an easy freezer meal to just get out during the week when we're busy with work and taking care of our son. So you can see right here, um you can imagine which one's the freezer portion. It's going to be the disposable one in the back there. So my prioritizing with this dish was to kind of put not exactly equal parts freezer meal and for our Easter egg dying um, friends gathering, but I wanted to make a decent amount for us to have a few meals um, saved away for a time when things are just too busy. So. That's what I'm doing right here. I'm making sure I'm separating them. And Shana's gonna tell you in a little bit, so watch till the end, how to really adequately prepare this meal to become a freezer friendly meal um, so that you don't have any freezer burn or any of that, because we hate that. Yes. And we do not wanna wreck food that we've already spent time with. Yeah. Now I know I said about using my own sauce, but we, um, definitely felt or i felt because shana was at work um but i definitely felt it needed sauce and that's definitely shana she always is encouraging extra sauce extra sauce and why do we do this corner thing i don't know i got it from you so it helps um the pasta not to dry out when you have it in the oven depending on your schedule when you host people the pasta mm -hmm. can be in the oven for a little longer depending on appetizers Here you see the final product um we had the friends over, they loved it. Actually a lot more went than I even thought. Yeah. To freeze this meal, I first put the foil back over the cold casserole. Then I put maybe three or so pieces of saran over top of that and really try to get it around the sides. And then I put foil on the top. On the top, you have to write the directions for reheating, what temperature it's at, and that you have to add the cheese five to 10 minutes before the end of baking. And then I would just put this in the freezer and I would also write a note um, to whoever is reheating this that there is saran underneath so that they don't cook the saran wrap. <laughs> and you also, I think it goes without saying, but you wanna put what you actually made, right? Because like yes. when we were getting ready to have the baby, we had like six of these all looking the same so you have to make sure you label it not just with directions but actually what the item yeah. is and since this doesn't have a sturdy lid and it's obviously a tin foil disposable pan you can put pieces of cardboard in between your freezer meals in the freezer stacking them uh, so that is a good hack to make sure that they all stay steady and frozen and we hope you all give this recipe a try for your next party we hope it's a success and that you enjoy it as much as we do. 
we are pretty sure people will be asking for the recipe afterwards because it has just been such a hit amongst our family and our friends. And it doesn't matter if they're fancy or not, everybody likes this dish. If you like what you saw, please stay dialed in and watch our next cooking video here. The cavatini recipe is linked to our description at our website, thesweetandsavvylife.com. Comment below on cooking videos you would love to see next from us. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.